Realty Income just announced some exciting news. It's set to acquire Spirit Realty Capital in a massive $9.3 billion deal. This is an all-stock transaction and it's happening at a 15% premium to Spirit Realty Capital's latest share price. If you followed my research on Seeking Alpha, you may remember that I actually called this back in 2018. In an article, I wrote that Realty Income should acquire Spirit Realty Capital in an all-stock transaction because even if it paid a 10 to 20% premium, the deal would be accredited to the FFO per share of Realty Income. Well, that's exactly what has happened, but is this a good deal today? Hey everyone, this is Jules I'm a CFA charter holder, but not a financial advisor, so please make sure to do your own research. I run an investment firm that specializes in REITs, like Realty Income, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this latest deal. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and like this video, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support. So on the surface, this looks like a great deal for both parties. On one hand, the shareholders of Spirit Realty Capital are getting a nice bump on day one since they're getting a 15% premium and going forward, they will be part of Realty Income, which is a superior rate in many respects. It has a better balance sheet, it has a better access to capital and a far better track record. Some investors may argue here that the price paid for Spirit Realty Capital is too low and if this was an all cash transaction, I would agree with you. Realty Income is paying a roughly 7.7% cap rate for the assets of Spirit Realty Capital, but I think that they're worth closer to a 7% cap rate, so they are getting a pretty good deal. However, here you need to remember that this is an all-stock transaction, so it's more similar to a merger, and so the management of Spirit Realty Capital is really betting here that their future will be stronger as part of Realty Income. I think that this is a pretty good bet because I suspect that the poor track record of Spirit Realty Capital will have caused it to persistently trade at a large discount relative to its peer group, hurting its cost of capital and its growth prospects. And then Realty Income on the other hand gets to grow its FFO per share on day one by 2.5% on a leveraged neutral deal and without having to tap the capital markets. That's simply because the valuation multiple of Realty Income is superior to that of Spirit Realty Capital and so the deal is accretive. Moreover, over time, Realty Income may enjoy another 1-2% to of accretion from management cost savings as well as other synergies. But despite that, the market really didn't like this deal and it caused the share price of Realty Income to crash when it was announced. I think that there are three main reasons why the market didn't like it. The first reason is that this deal is dilutive to the average portfolio quality of Realty Income. If you have followed Spirit Realty Capital for a while, you will likely know that they have historically focused mostly on higher yielding properties that are occupied by riskier tenants. As a result of this, the company even ran into some severe difficulties back in 2018 when one of its biggest tenants filed for bankruptcy. Since then, the REIT has spun off its troubled assets, it has increased the average quality of its portfolio, but even then it has kept buying mostly higher yielding properties because of its higher cost of capital. Realty Income, on the other hand, has historically mostly focused on the higher quality segment of the net lease market, and so by acquiring Spirit Realty Capital, it is clearly stepping into higher risk investments. I was amused to see Joey Agri, who's the CEO of Agri Realty, another net lease street, comment in an article that they would never do this deal. He said that there's no chance that there will be a competing offer from Agri Realty because the portfolio of Spirit Realty Capital simply wouldn't fit their own portfolio from a qualitative perspective. Then the second reason why the market didn't like it is because Realty Income is simply getting too big for its own good. This is something that I've discussed in quite a few of my past articles on Realty Income and it's the main reason why for a long time I argued that there were better opportunities in the market back when Realty Income was trading at a materially higher share price. Well, this deal is only going to make the size issue even bigger. Once this deal is completed, Realty Income is going to have an enterprise value of roughly $63 billion, which is massive for an at least rate. The problem here is that the bigger you are and the harder it becomes to grow. The larger you are and the smaller the impact new acquisitions will have and there are only so many properties for sale at any given time. I think that Realty Income's large size is the main reason why it has underperformed most of its peers over the past years as it hasn't been able to grow quite as fast as other companies like Essential Properties Realty Trust, Vichy Properties, NNN REIT or even Agri Realty. Realty Income of course here is arguing that the large size is an advantage as it gives them significant economies of scale. 
but I think that the market is smart enough to recognize that past a certain point, the size becomes an issue and you start facing these economies of scale. And that's exactly what the company is facing today. And then the third reason why the market didn't like this deal is because the accretion to its FFO per share wasn't quite as much as what the market would have hoped for. The last major REIT acquisition that Realty Income did was a company called Vio REIT. And back then the accretion was about 10% to its FFO per share. But now with the acquisition of Spirit Realty Capital, it's only expecting about 2.5% of FFO per share. And so here you need to ask yourself, is this all worth it? Is it worth it to dilute the average quality of your portfolio and to potentially hurt your long-term growth prospects just to secure a short-term win of 2.5% of FFO per share? The market appears to think that it isn't worth it and that's why the share price of Realty Income crashed when the news was announced. So should you buy, sell or hold Realty Income? I still give it a strong buy rating at today's share price. I think that many investors tend to forget that every investment has pros and cons and this includes Realty Income. The pros about Realty Income are that it owns one of the best portfolios of net lease properties in the world. It has an A rated balance sheet, one of the best track records in the sector. It earns highly consistent and predictable cash flow that's set for growth over the long run, even despite growing slightly slower than some of its peers. And finally, the management is laser focused on growing its monthly dividend income. But then the main cons here are clearly the large size of the rate, which is now pushing it to do more portfolio deals, which risk diluting the average quality of realty income over time. And then yes, the large size is also likely going to hurt its long-term growth rate. But in my opinion, this is today more than reflected in its valuation. Historically, realty income has commonly traded at 20 to 25 times FFO and a low dividend yield of around 4%. And yet today you get to buy it at just around half of that at around 11 times FFO and its dividend yield is now approaching 7%. Not just that, but Realty Income is now also priced at a discount relative to most of its net lease peers. This includes Vichy Properties, Essential Properties Realty Trust, Agri Realty and even NNN REIT. I think that the entire net lease sector here is heavily discounted and each of these REITs have unique pros and cons depending on what you're looking for. If your goal is to maximize total returns over time, then Realty Income likely isn't your best choice in the sector, given that it's likely to grow at a slower pace than most of its peers over time. However, if you're a conservative, income-oriented investor who's seeking to maximize safe dividend income and don't care as much about growth, then Realty Income is arguably the best pick here. Priced at a new 7% dividend yield, it only takes 3 to 4% of annual growth to reach double digital returns. And I think that realty income is likely to achieve that over time. On top of that, eventually, as the REIT sector recover, I would expect quite significant upside as the valuation multiple of realty income gets closer to its historic average. Even if it returned to just 15 times FFO, which would still represent quite a steep discount to its historic averages, that would unlock 30% upside to shareholders who buy it at today's share price. For this reason, we think that the risk reward is very compelling here and we give it a strong buy rating. Now, if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, as well as all my transactions in real time, feel free to join my REIT newsletter, Hired Landlord, for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. And otherwise, once more, if you could please click the like button, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.